Hey everyone, it's Charlie again. I'm here with another idea of mine. Um, this is for Tesla pump. I'm calling it a Tesla pump mixer. Um, I'm just gonna break it down real fast. If you see there's three holes on this side and three holes on the other side, but they don't communicate with each other. So when this pump gets spinning, this side pulls from these three holes and then this side pulls from these three holes. And as such, you're gonna, you can have two, two fluids coming in and they would get mixed perfectly by this stream coming in and mixing as the pump spins, this stream will come out, this stream will come out from the one side and then the other side has this stream coming in from each part and mixing. And so as this spins, all each of these ports will just completely perfectly layer this the two fluids into a nice mix as they shear together. And so I you know this is kind of seems a little novel and you know this actually could be great for like paint mixing or just there's a lot of industry um, uses for this but there's what's really really important about this is what the whole purpose of the dual stage Tesla turbine is is you use the, the, the second stage to keep a low pressure in the system to continue boiling off the steam at lower temperatures than normal water boiling pressure or temperatures. What you want though is you still have to condense the cold steam on the other side and it means you have to have a cold sink that's capable of removing the heat fast enough to let it condense still. So even with the second stage you're going to need a condenser. But why this is really really cool is because Instead of using an actual condenser, because the Tesla turbine has no detrimental effects from cavitation, we can actually let one side be the exhaust pulling all the, the steam from the drive side. I say pulling, I don't mean pulling it. The pressure moves it through. Um, so the, 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 this will be on the second stage of the dual stage turbine and it'll pull the cold steam through the system, through the turbine, and what you want it to do is condense, and so the opposite side of this, you have it pulling in cold water, so that in between the disc faces, the cold steam is being brought in by the one side, and then cold, actual cold water, or cold enough to cause the cold steam to condense, is brought in, and as the cold steam and the water mix in between the discs, it's going to force a condensation and create a very, very low pressure. And if you want to know uh, an example of this, you can see in iEnergy Supply, um, Jeremiah from iEnergy Supply did this in one of his videos where he was running steam. And at the very end of the video, he floods the, the second stage with cold water and it rapidly speeds up. And that's because of the condensation and the, the rapid um, development of a vacuum that continues boiling, even if there's like very little steam left in the system. But, and I know I'm kind of rambling on here. I'm just super excited about this idea. This is, this is just gonna be revolutionary. This means we don't, we, we don't even need, if, if possible, we don't even need a con condenser. And this is not only the condenser, but it's a regenerative system. So like, even if we do have a small condenser, after the liquid water comes through the condenser, it's cold, it needs to be reheated, it needs to be brought up to a little warmer, that cold water can be mixed with the cold steam to have cause the condensation where you drop the temperature of the cold steam and you raise the temperature of the liquid water. And as it goes out through the condenser, we can make a mixing chamber and make it so that that mixing chamber has, is the, the pre-feed for the the, the boiling section of the cryophorus and again I'm, I'm rambling on here I'm, I'm just super excited about this this is this could be revolutionary to the the way things go on with the dual stage and the cryophorus and this would drastically I mean drastically can reduce the size of the condenser as um, when you consider the fact that to bring the temperature down of the cold steam the amount of mass in it is very very low to, like compared to a single droplet of water, cold water that's being brought in, and it's being it, uh, aerosolized or atomized as it being just rips through the the turbine or the pump, and as it mixes with the cold steam, you've got a lot of mass of cold water, well, relatively cold, and a low, low, low mass of steam, even though it's a really large volume, 
you can cause the heat transfer to be great enough that it causes the cold steam to cavitate within the disc faces, which is not a problem though with the, with the uh, Tesla pump as the cavitation ends up happening in the direction of uh, motion radially and not axially along on the face plates. But I, I just hope some of you guys can realize just how amazing this, this idea really is and just how revolutionary it's going to be here as soon as I get this honed in. And then you can see I have these shown where the holes are the same on each side. This would be for an equal mix flow of two liquids where you want to mix them evenly. Now to change that ratio, like I'm probably going to have to do with the regular cold steam is it'll have the full six teardrop holes and there's probably just going to be um, a couple small holes in here because you don't need very much water and you don't want to do too much work moving the water. Um, but yeah, this is this is huge. Hope you guys like this and I know some of you guys aren't going to watch it to all the all the way to the end here and thank you for watching if you did. Um, Hope you guys have a nice day. Enjoy.